Sometimes you just have to have a parade. 1989 years ago today was the first Palm Sunday. Two giant armies marched into battle that first day of the week. One came with noisy, marching feet and glimmering metal and power and fear. The other parade came in more of a wandering steps, noisy voices, and they were weaponless. One was in anything but social distance, but they were marching in lockstep order behind their leader pilot. The other was anything but social distance as people clamored to do palm branches and coats and give praise to Jesus. One had uniforms, the other had people who taken their coats off, thrown down for their ruler. The battle would be fought in Jerusalem that week. There'd be only one casualty of the battle, and the one casualty was on the winning side. He won because he turned out, after all, not to be a casualty. Come walk with me, my friends, through a story of victory. A battle won 2,000 years ago today that allows us to be victorious today. Come to Jerusalem in 31 AD. See the battle between Pilate and Jesus and see the ways we are blessed because Jesus won that day. And consider how we can be winning blessers now. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the good news in Jesus Christ. As we talk about his word today, we pray that the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today, we are talking about day one of a battle we know one side of pretty well. Many people are familiar with the story of Palm Sunday history. We're going to read and celebrate about that parade today. Here in Matthew chapter 21, verses one through three, it says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them or bring them to me, and if anyone says to you, if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. Now, I can relate to this part of the story. No, I've never borrowed a colt. No, I've never gone and gotten a donkey for the Lord, and I'm not very good on horses. But I have gone into places ready for a miracle, even though I didn't know the miracle was about to happen. I think about times when I go to see a patient in the hospital, and before you know it, I get on the elevator and I find the family member of another patient who's in the hospital whom I can see also while I'm there because God worked out for our lives to connect at just the right time. I bet you've had times where the Lord's worked out lives connecting at just the right times. I can think about times when I decide what to preach on, and then that very day, I hear a story or I read something in the newspaper and realize that goes perfectly with what I wanted to preach about, and I add it into the sermon. Or I'm walking down the hall of school, and I bump into a student who particularly needs some building up that day, and I have the time to share. All the time, my friends, we are part of God's tapestry of grace that he is weaving. Sometimes we just got to stop take a breath and give thanks to him for the way he's working in our lives and around our lives so we can be that kind of blessing. Sometimes we just need to have a sort of a parade. Heard a story this morning about a girl named Courtney Coco Johnson, who nine days ago had her last chemotherapy. This young high schooler didn't have a large group gathering with her as she left the hospital for we are under times of isolation. She couldn't have a big celebration of people waiting to greet her as a huge group at home all at one time. But lo and behold, when she got near her home, she discovered they were having a parade for her in reverse, if you will. It was in the town of Pasadena, home of the Rose Parade. But this time, instead of people being out on floats and going down the street to cheer, 
They sat inside their cars still as Coco went by them, and they all cheered and rooted for her victory from their cars, their trucks, their vans, and more. Sometimes, my friends, we just need to stop and celebrate that God still moves today. What makes your heart sing today, my friends? Well, the disciples could have paused and stopped and sang for glory about what God did because they went and got the cult, just like Jesus said. But there was no time for that. For right away we read this in verses 6 and 7. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit upon. They didn't have time to sit around and think about the first miracle, for Jesus was climbing on, the parade was going, and they were invited to jump into the parade. And I love how right here we have a mini lesson in stewardship of giving our time, talent, and treasures to the Lord. When we give what we have, it is enough for the Lord. These disciples gave their time and joined the great parade. These disciples gave their talents, for they walked and got the donkey and brought it back to their Lord. And these disciples were giving up their treasure, for they were marching with the hope in their hearts they had of the God who saved them. I saw a beautiful example this week of a believing heart in action. A good friend of mine named Vernon this week welcomed his wife home after she had quite a stay in isolation trying to recover from her latest bout. Now, Vernon doesn't run a local ABC news station so that his wife's story would end up on the news, but he does have Facebook and he does have a heart to write, so he took his time to post it on Facebook. He used his talent to write beautifully of his love for God and his love for his wife. And he's talked about his treasure of his family and his faith in what he wrote. He gave what he had to encourage many hearts. Sometimes, my friends, we just have to have a parade and celebrate the good things God is still doing. Let's go on in our story, beginning in verse 8. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! The parade begins. Jesus is entering from the west side of the city. We know that he stopped at the Mount of Olives first, so he's coming in from the west. A flash mob forms. Coats fly off to cover the path. Palm branches are laid down in joy and praise and in thanksgiving. And the voices ring out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. As they're coming down the hillside to come into the city, they then enter a city that's already swelled with people. A city that grows more than High Point does during the time of furniture market. A city that grows more than Greensboro does when it hosts the ACC tournament. The city of Jerusalem went from about 100,000 people living there to approximately 3 million people, Jews who came from all over the Middle East where they'd been scattered, came to Jerusalem to come and celebrate Passover. And they were going to see and hear things that day that they would tell others about all through the Middle East. They were going to be a part of spreading the gospel everywhere they would go, for they would take the good news of what they saw of Jesus during Holy Week back to their homelands. And when they went back to their homelands, they likely sang the two songs we heard about a minute ago in our story. They likely sang Hosanna and blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord who is Jesus. Hosanna, which means save us now. Don't go to the Romans and their false gods. Find saving from the true God who saves. And blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I love this word blessed. The word is translated in the Hebrew, in the Greek, it is eulogia, where we get the word eulogy from, like we speak at a person's funeral, when we bless them for the way they have been a blessing upon the world. Blessed is the one who brings the words of God in this world. What are our voices singing these days, my friends? As COVID-19 continues to instill fear in hearts and minds, 
Are we remembering the one who truly saves? I'm not saying to ignore Dr. Birx or Dr. Fauci who are doing such great work for our country. But I am saying to remember that Jesus is the one who ultimately saves. Follow the doctor's orders, but remember our master healer. While we are physically distant, my friends, are we still taking time to praise the Lord? When we talk to others, are we speaking well of the Lord rather than just speaking of the scary news of the day? Are we a basic parade marching in the midst of the world's warriors? That's what Jesus and the disciples were doing. They were marching and having a parade despite the fact that on the east side of town, on the east side of town, it was a very different story. For on the other side of town, they didn't have one they were looking forward to see. Instead, they were looking at the one whom they were looking out for, named Pilate. He was the Roman governor of Israel, and he would have come in for the Passover week to try to quell the crowds. He knew the three million gathering in the city might lead to a kind of rebellion. Many of Jesus' followers were thinking they could have a revolution that week that would come from the large crowds. So Pilate left his home on the coast of the Mediterranean and came into a city house for the week to threaten any uprising from happening. The historians record it like this. They say, in a show of military force, the second parade included cavalry on horses, foot soldiers, leather armor, helmets, weapons, banners, golden eagles mounted on poles, sun glinting on metal and gold. The sound of marching feet, the creaking of leather, the clinking of bird bridles, the beating of drums would have had a sobering effect on all those who saw this parade. There would have been no shouts of Hosanna as the powerful pilot strode aside his horse, hoping to strike fear and the resentful onlookers. As Pilate led a regiment of his own most trusted soldiers into town as a show of force, he did so with confidence, knowing that he was backed up by several battalions of Rome's finest garrison on the west side of Jerusalem, ready to flood into the city at Pilate's command. That's the story from the east side of town, my friends. That's the story of fear, intimidation, and oppression that was going on. So Palm Sunday in Jerusalem had contrasting images. On one side, you had people cringing in a crowd over Pilate. On others, you had those who were praising in a parade following Jesus. Feared is the one who comes in the name of Rome. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In which camp, my friends, are we living today as a follower of Christ? In which camp is our church living right now? Are we cringing in fear with the crowds or are we praising in full with the Lord of the universe? Have we told fear and doubt about the victory that's already been won through hope, faith, and love, the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ? You know, Hebrews 7, 7 says, as everyone knows, a person who, who has the power to bless is always greater than the person he blesses. I'm going to say that again. Read it with me if you will. As everyone knows, a person who has the power to bless is always greater than the person he blesses. Are we willing to be a blesser in the time of fear? This word for bless is eulogia, the same word that's used in Matthew. What blessed is he who comes in the Lord? Are we ready to pass on that blessing like Jesus brought to this world? Will we use our time to praise God? Will we use our talents to speak that Jesus saves? Upon whom will our eyes focus and our voices sing? Will we be ones in God's choir who sing Jesus saves? Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. You know, you might say to me, preacher, we live in times of fear and doubt. Tell me a time you've ever not had a little bit of fear and doubt, for there's always fear and doubt of one kind or another in this world. Despite the fear and doubt, my friends, will we speak to those whom we know and love that our God saves? Will those who hear from us be blessed because we have spoken to them of the goodness 
of the Lord. My friends, let's join his parade. Let's bless others with his word. Let's do a little bit of that right now and sing together a beautiful song that sings about how good God is. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art and when i think that God his son not sparing, sent him to die, oh, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take us home, what joy shall fill our hearts. Then we shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim our God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you be gracious unto you. May the Lord look a favor upon your life and grant you peace, peace that comes from taking part in his parade of praise today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.